Good morning. It's Saturday the 17th of January 2015 and a very, very cold Saturday morning it is too. Mind you, a little a little warmer than it was last night. I was working uh, at a place in Essex last night and there was frost on my little car. Now, I'm not used to getting frost on the car because I have a garage. Oh, yes. I have a garage and that car always, always goes back away in its garage. Now, Years ago, when I was just a small teenager, I used to, for some reason, laugh at my dad for for bothering to put the car back in the garage, you know, when he could just quite as easily leave it outside the house. And I don't know if it's because he used to do it. I, I, I used to, that used to amuse me, that did, because the garage was actually nowhere near the house. It wasn't, it wasn't like 200 mile away, but it was a little bit further than, shall we say, just kind of leaving it outside the house. We lived in a place uh, called Roehampton, which is in southwest London. And I grew up there between 1969 and uh, 1983, which is when I got married. I got married in 1983. And then uh, we we got a flat in... um, First of all, we got a a room in Earlsfield in London. Then we got a flat in Battersea. And then... After that, I went home, all in the same, year. <laughs> all in the same year, all in 1983. All those things happened in one year. Didn't quite work out for me, but there you go. One of those things. And um, now, where were we going with that? Do you know, I've lost, I've lost the train of thread already. Roehampton. Where on earth was I going with that now? Oh yes, yeah, Dad and the garage. God, that, I mean, we've only been here a couple of minutes and I've already lost the thread of the programme. Yeah, um, and it would be, I suppose, about, a, let's think, about a ten-minute walk to the garage. And Dad would quite happily drop us off at home and we get out of the car and go up the stairs because we lived in a three-bedroom masonette, uh, which is... A, a house on top of a house sort of thing and we were on the top one so we didn't have a garden it was a little balcony where mum used to dry her clothes and things in weather like this when it was really cold outside the clothes would be stiff you know we wake up in the morning if she'd left them out all night because the rain couldn't really get onto the balcony but the clothes were as stiff as cardboard because <laughs> they'd all frozen you see and Dad would, would quite happily walk, go to the garage and then walk back from there about 10 minutes and that didn't bother him. I always thought it was very strange. I thought, why doesn't he just leave it outside? Because in those days, there was actually plenty of parking space downstairs. Not now. Oh my God, they fight for a parking space now. But in those days, there was plenty of parking spaces. And I don't know why I did find it amusing. However, as soon as I got my first home, a flat, I wanted a garage. I thought, oh, I don't want to leave it outside. Something might happen. Of course, times had changed by then. I got my first flat in 1987. Where I am living now is only my second place. I'm very happy here. You know, I've got, I'm have got i all set up here. I've got my little studio here. Got a lovely little garden, uh, the swimming pool and the shops. Everything is close by. Got my best friend living just up the road. You know, I'm, I'm quite quite well positioned here. In and out of London, you know, not much too, too much of a problem within an hour usually, unless I'm travelling in with the traffic. So I'm quite well set up here. But I wanted a garage straight away. Isn't that strange? And I had to wait a couple of years before the council actually bought, built some more garages. And then I joined this list and uh, I, got, I got a new garage straight away. So I wonder why that was. Why I insisted on putting my car in a garage. And even here, I have a garage in a block. Um, it's about 30 seconds walk from my house. It's got uh, several locks and an alarm on it and all that business because I'm always very um, uh, security conscious, shall we say. And I always insist on putting it in there. Now, I do like it. And and again, there are people here whose garages are just stuffed full of junk. Absolutely stuffed full of junk. And these are people who generally have to get up early in the morning to go to work. You know, sort of six or seven o'clock in the morning. Um, And not that I'm usually up 
on the very, very rare occasions that I am up at that time, you see them scratching away at that old window, don't you? And they do that every morning, and it does take a while. And I don't have to do that. On a really cold day, I can actually open the garage door and a little bit of heat comes up. And it's quite nice. No frost on my car. Thank you very much. So it was very cold last night. Um, I'm now leaving the heating on all the time. I must tell you that. I've only just started doing that since having a new boiler put in. And one of the things that... I didn't believe people were telling me I was wrong, okay? Because my asthma has, hasn't been this, I'm going to say this good. Is that what you would say? This good. This, um, it's not a problem. It's not really a problem at the moment. My asthma has never been so settled as it's been since I have left that heating on. So there's there's something in that. People used to say to me, oh, you'll get ill with the heat and not on. I, I didn't take any notice of it. I'll be honest with you. Even, <laughs> although it pains to tell you this, I don't think he's watching or listening at the moment. I hope not. But my best friend Ron was actually right. You do need to leave the heating on if you've got something. Or even if you've not got anything. I mean, for years, <laughs> for years and years, I've been too tight to leave that heating on. I used to have it on timer in the early days, but even then I, I, I tried to time it less and less. <laughs> it has actually made a huge difference um, to the asthma. I mean, it really has. Has anyone else noticed that? Anyone else have asthma or anything like that? And leave the heating on. I don't have it very hot. I gather the norm is about 21, 22 degrees. I have mine on between 18 and 19, depending on how, how cold I feel. Do you leave your heating on all the time? Have you got asthma? Did it make any difference to that? You can join in with the show today. We are live. Well, we are live and we are recorded. We are live if it's Saturday the 17th of January 2015. And it's coming up to 10 past 12 GMT. If that's the time while you are watching this program, then you can join in live. There is a Skype. You can Skype in. My Skype in is United Kingdom Talk. All one word. United Kingdom Talk. Or there is a local London phone number. 020 eight one double four three four double seven okay o two o eight one double four three four double seven be lovely to talk to you today um we already have young Kieran with us this morning good morning Kieran are you someone who leaves their heating on all the time and what's your what what do you pay for gas mine's working out about at, at this time with it on constantly in this cold weather I had my first shall we say, leave the, leave the boiler on all the time bill last month for 50 quid in a, mo in a month. So that's five week, four, four, about four and a half weeks gas, I suppose, for 50 quid. Does that sound quite good? The electricity, only 23 quid because I've got the solar panels and they work out quite well. They do save you a small fortune. And of course, every year I do change Providers generally, I go on the uh, U-Switch websites where you can compare your different uh, prices of gas and what have you. Now on Watchdog this week, don't know if you saw Watchdog, but they were saying that when you're comparing gas and electricity and power prices, when you're doing that, you should use more than one of those comparison sites. Now, I've always used U-Switch. And at the moment, um, I got an email. Let me see if I can just bring that up there. I got an email. Yeah, there it is from U-Switch. Now, I think, I think you can actually see this. I'm not quite sure how to show it to you. Uh... Uh, no, I'm not going to because I'm not quite sure how to do it. But I got an email today from U-Switch 
telling me that if I switched at the moment I'm with First Utility, if I switched from them to Eon, it would save me £148 a year. Which is a considerable saving, isn't it? £148 a year. That's on the U-Switch side. So that's, that's one. But there are many others. I mean, you've got uh, Compare... Compare energy um, uh, uh, prices, uswitch.com. Go compare. Money supermarket, money saving, compare the market. And there's so many of them, I tell you. There's a hell of a lot of them. There really is. Um, all right, we've got a call coming in from uh, Alex. Hello, Alex. Are you Hello? with us, Alex? Hello, Alex. Hi. Hello. 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 All right, Alex. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. No, nope, he can't hear me. Oh, try again. Once again. Hello, Alex. Hello. 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 What? Where are you? <laughs> nope. We're not having any luck with Alex. I think he's actually, um, well, I wonder where he is. He's got that little squiggly, uh, squiggly lines there. Let's try this. Hello? Hello, Alex? No, I don't Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Alex? No, we can't hear you. Speak. No, oh, we'll give up on that one, I think. <laughs> Never mind, Kieran. Uh, Kieran says, I'm a weirdo. I live for the cold. I don't cope well in the heat. No, I don't think that's being weird at all, Kieran. Some people just don't like the heat. You know, and that's, that's the truth of it. They just don't like the heat. Um, I wonder if someone else could Skype in as well so that I can just um, just test that it's working. I don't know why Alex can't hear us. I have a feeling he's in another country. Let me see if I can find where, where he is. Let's see where he is. I have a feeling he's in the, um, quite far away, young Alex. He can't hear us for some reason. Oh, he's in China. Wow. Hello, Alex. That's fantastic. So, Alex, presumably you can hear the show, but you can't hear when you call on Skype. Is that be about right? We haven't had a call from China before, have we? Wow, that's great. Let's try Ryan. Let's go to Ryan in the Netherlands, in Holland. Hello, Ryan. Hello. Good morning. How are you? Good. And how old are you, Ryan? Uh, I text at even... Uh... Ryan? Yes? How old are you? I am uh, sitting in the text. In a text? Oh, can you tell me? Yes, 11. 11, wow. So you're not really interested in electricity and gas prices at the moment, are you? Mum and Dad looks after all those, don't they? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so tell me about where you live. In Holland, are you in uh, a city or the countryside? I don't have any idea. Uh, yeah, but you know where you live? <laughs> yes, Den Haag. Okay, is that like the city or the countryside? Mm, I think city. It's a city with lots of buildings all around you? No, no, not full of buildings. So you've got some open green spaces? Yes. Are you learning English? Yes. Obviously, yeah. Well, your English is very good, my little friend. That's right. So tell me, what do you do? What do you like to do? Apart from being at school, well, at school, what do you like to do at school? I'm creating videos. You make videos? And, and I play games online. Right. Yes. What games do you play? Mm, make that out. What one? I play so many games. Is there um, uh, what 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 uh, 
or what do you call it? What games, what console, what games machine do you have? Uh, Nintendo 3DS, a N- normal N- DS, a Wii, and a PC. You've got lots of games machines. I had a Wii once. Ooh. Yep, I had the, um, the sports package. Have you got that one? No. Oh, okay. Well, you could play cricket and, um, uh, I think you could go rowing. Um, I can't remember what else was on the net. It was a long time ago. But for me, um, I didn't really use it very much. I think I used it twice. And then it kind of just went back in the box and I lost interest. In the end, uh, my friend took it from me. I gave it to him and we gave it to a a children's home that was close by. um, And they Mm. get use out of it. Mm. My nephew likes... Yeah, my nephew likes uh, computer games. I think he plays the game called Call of Duty. Do you know that one? No, that games I doesn't even play. Right. What ones do you play? Can... Do you play um, Mario, maybe? Yes. Oh, you play Mario. I remember Super Mario. I used to like that. Yes, I know that game too. I played the very first one. And then when I was um, 16, we had a game called Pac-Man. Yes, I remember that one too. I bet your dad used to play that one. Mm, I think... Think, but I don't know yes, sure, must... but I play it sometimes online. You must tell him that the man on YouTube used to play Pac-Man as well. I like the noises, do you? <laughs> I like it too. What do you like at school, Alex? Uh, sorry, uh, Ryan? Not really. You don't like school? It's boring. Yeah, I used to think school was boring. But you have to go there if you want to... Um, uh, be something. Get a, do you know I get what, a job. Yes, do you know what job you would like to do? No, I have no idea. N- absolutely no idea at all. Maybe you'd like to make videos. Yes, that can be a job for me. Do you make um, live videos? or Yes. Are I, they like animations, like cartoons? Nah, I want to make animation, but I don't can find a good programmer. A program? Program, can I not find? Oh, I don't know. Um, I tell you what, I've got a friend. I think I've got a friend listening at the moment. His name's Jason Allen. Good morning, Jason. Who says, uh, afternoon, it's great to hear you have international listeners. Yes, good morning, Jason. Jason, can you help us? Um, first of all, Jason, <laughs> I think you need to add us on the other... Uh, Skype. Yeah, the Skype you should be using, gang, is, is United Kingdom Talk. OK, that's the Skype you should be using. Jimmy, I think you've messaged me on my private one as well. So the Skype you need to be using is United Kingdom Talk, Jason. All right. Um, can you tell us, is there any good animation programmes? Pro- presumably you want this for free, Ryan, yes? A free one. Yes, I'm looking for a free one. A free one. Is there any free animation programme, perhaps, that Ryan, you could recommend? Now, Jason, um, I've known him uh, for a few years, and he makes little videos like this. He makes little animations and things like that, so he might be able to help us, all right? All right. Do you watch uh, cartoon things and that, like, uh, do you like Disney? Yes. You love Disney? Yes, I love it. Yes, me too. I've been to Disney in Florida. Wow. Yeah, it's really good. And there's one in Paris as well. That would be easier for you to get to, of course, wouldn't it? Yes. Would you like to go there? Yes. I think maybe your mum and dad take you there sometime? I've been there... Now I'm doesn't been there, actually, but I w- well want to go. You haven't been there yet? Yes. Ah, well, maybe you will do someday. I think you will like it very much. I think that I am like it very much, too. Yes. What Disney films do you like? Phew. Them all. Do you have a favourite? No. Little Mermaid? Mm, no. Lilo and Stitch. Oh, which one was that? Uh, Lilo and Stitch. 
Lino and Stitch. I don't know that one. Or it is a Pixar, but it's a confusion. Pixar and Disney. Pixar. Okay. Okay. I know Pixar. They did Toy Story, didn't they? Yes. Did you like Toy Story? Yes. There's a new one out at the moment at the cinema. Um, Into the Woods. Have you got that there there yet? No. I think that's a Disney film. Um, someone I know saw it and they uh, they said it was good. But there's no music in it. I'm kind of used to Disney films having music in it and uh, princesses and things like that. So I might go and see that one myself. Hmm. Hmm. When's your birthday? 12th Yanni. Yanni, okay. Uh, what month is that? One, two, three, four, five... Uh, six. So, one January, February, March, April, June. That's Ju- we call that June. June. Yeah. yeah. Our, our twelve months are January, which is now. February. That's when my birthday is. My birthday is on the fifth of February. Uh, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December when Christmas is. Do you like Christmas? Yes. What did you get? Did you get many gifts this year? Uh, Ina, I can't. What I, I forget what I get. Oh, you you mustn't forget what your mum and dad got you. <laughs> yes. Try and think hard. Did you get a game, perhaps, for your machine? Mm. No, it was something other. What did I get? Even no, I can't remember. Oh, you can't remember. Never mind. I'm we sure got also the- another cr- uh, s- special present day in the Netherlands called Sinterklaas. Sinterklaas, yes, yes. But that is not, that is a fest in our land. Sinterklaas from yeah. um, from uh, oh I've forgotten the place he comes from now. Netherlands. But where does he come from? Is it um? Spain? He no. comes out Spain. Not Spain. It's a very cold... Uh, Lapland. Lapland. Have you Wait, heard of Lapland? Uh, I can send a photo... If I can... You see my screen? Yes. Here, this man. Okay, one second. Ah, oh, yes, Santa Claus. One minute. Now, I've, I think... Um, I can... Yes, I can see that. If you... Just wait a second. Can I show that? No, can I show that? No, I can't show that, unfortunately. But yes, I see him. And he's got a hat on. He looks like a um, a religious person, doesn't he, with a hat on? Mm. Yes, every time that hat. And there are some people who say that it's racist because he had this people with it. But I don't find it. Oh, but oh, I, I don't see. find it racist here. Oh, no, it's not racist at all, is it? No. Um, but their set is racist. It's not racist. Uh, if I can just tell the people, Ryan sent me a photograph. In the middle is a white Santa Claus, and either side are like two black... Are they, would they be helpers? Helpers, Helpers yes. to Santa Claus. No, that's not racist at all. That's just, just different people doing different jobs. I think sometimes, Ryan... Um, Perhaps you're a little bit young to understand, but the whole racist thing is um, blown out of proportion. And I think some people yes. often look um, to be offended when there actually is no offence. Do you understand? Yes, I understand that. Yeah, yeah. Now, my friend um, Jason, who's listening, he's in England as well. He's just said to me, I don't know any free animation programmes. There are some for the iPad and iPhone. Do you have one of those? Yes, okay. I forget that. There are some for iPad and iPhone, which might be the simplest way to do it. Okay? Okay. So maybe if you type, type in to your um, Apple Store, free animation, there might be something, something on there, Ryan. Yes, okay, I can maybe, take a look at that. Maybe you could make something and then send it to me. Yes, I'm also download videos and then make their from videos with Movie Maker. Movie Maker? Yes, I then 
downloading videos yes. from YouTube and then I can mix it and making also that way videos. I understand, yes. I understand. So you take videos from YouTube. Is that on your um, mobile phone? No, on my PC. On your, on your computer. Then you mix it and then put it all together and make a new one from it all. Now, then I set it on YouTube and then I make new videos. Okay, well, what is your YouTube channel? Can we, can we look at that later? Uh, I can send that. That's on fantastic that you do that sort of thing. Well, I want to sneeze. <laughs> Let me see if I can say that. Oh, just a minute. Oh, I can't sneeze now. How annoying is that? Um, is that the YouTube video you're sending? Oh, okay. So this are, yeah, is I'm sending you to my YouTube channel. Right, and that's called Ryan... TV channel, TV canal. TV. What does canal mean? It's actually a Dutch channel. There's, that's the reason why... Oh, I see, yes. Is this a private channel or would it be okay to read it out? It, read it out? Okay, so Ryan's uh, YouTube channel, if you want to look, boys and girls, pre pre preferably after I've finished, <laughs> Ryan's uh, TV channel is Ryan TV Canal. That's R-Y-A-N T-V K-A-N-A-L-L. -L. Okay, once again, that's a, a young lad's uh, TV channel. Is Ryan, R-Y-A-N TV Canal. K A N A W -L, L Ryan T V Canal and that's all one word and we'll all have a look, look, little look at that later all right Ryan yes well it's lovely to talk to you and I hope we talk again soon uh, maybe next week as well yes I'm Ken on Saturday good have a nice weekend and a nice week at school you too Bye -bye. Uh, sorry at your home yes that's it Cheerio. Goodbye. Bye-bye. What a nice young man to talk to. That's Ryan uh, in the Netherlands there. And uh, don't forget, have a look at his little TV ch uh, channel. He remixes YouTube videos. Ryan TV Canal. R-Y-A-N-T-V-K-A-N-A-L-L. -L. That's what I like about doing this show. You know, you never know what's, who's going to appear next. Good morning to Jimmy Butler. Nephew Jimmy is with us this morning. And all he says is good afternoon. He uses another word as well. <laughs> <laughs> you, which I cannot read out onto this programme. Can I, Jimmy? Tell me I can't read it out on this programme. I don't know. <laughs> oh, now, let me see if there's any uh, messages. A very good morning to Marge, who's with us this morning as well. Good morning, Marge. I did, of course, uh, send over your messages uh, uh, to Wendy. So, uh, And Wendy thanks you for that, OK? Do a few more uh, messages. Um, oh, no, no more at the moment. All right. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. Now, you remember I told you last week, I think I have downloaded my first ebook. My first ebook. Now, the ebook I downloaded, I want to recommend to you now. Okay. Now, I got this from Amazon and. I found out about it um, because I follow a, a Twitter of someone who's on LBC. His name is Nick Abbott. Very, very, very funny man. And he's bought, he's bought a few books out, actually. I've um, only found, only downloaded the one of them. And I just wanted to read you a little excerpt from it. Now, where is it now? I can't find it now. Oh, isn't it always the way? Now, one second. Here we are. Here we are. Nope, I've lost it now. I've lost the bit I wanted. And I, do you know, I've gone so far now. One of the things with books, I kind of give up on reading them. All I see is is 
how much book there is to read rather than, you know, the story. Do you see what I mean? So you get a book that's so thick and you read a few pages and then all I see is the thickness of the rest of the book and I think, oh, I can't be bothered to watch that. Um, and that's why I don't really read. The, the idea of a Kindle has never really interested me. However, this book came out and knowing... Knowing the person that wrote the book, the e-book, it's only available on an e-book as far as I know, I thought, you know, I'll give that one a go. And I looked it up. First of all, I thought I'll buy the book. It wasn't available. E-book only. And I thought, well, that's no good. I haven't got a Kindle. But then I found that uh, Amazon will give you a free Kindle app. For your iPhone, and it's on here now, right? Little Kindle app there. You probably, no, I don't think you can see that. It just looks white to you, but there is actually words on there. And you download the Kindle app for free, and then buy whatever book you want. And the book cost me a pound, one pound ninety nine. And it is very funny. I'm going to recommend this to you once again. It's from uh, Nick Abbott. Let me see if I can find. I can't even find the right title. I've I've kind of opened the, opened the thing, but um. I don't know how to get back to the front page. <laughs> oh, God, how does it all work? Anyway, here's an excerpt from, from, from his book, OK? Children are from Pluto. And he goes on. The kids today don't know what planet they're on. It's not that they've been raiding Mummy's medicine chat cabinet or that their minds have been warped by listening to Justin Bieber's music. It's just that they actually do not know which of the orbs spinning around the solar system that they inhabit. And they don't know what a solar system is or what inhabit means. The survey was conducted by adults who have not had to experience the education system that is currently being inflicted here in the UK among the young. It is revealed that there are certain gaps in the knowledge of the children of Great Britain. Definition, a collection of countries that broke away from the mainland Europe as the tectonic plate shifted and which has been trying to get further away by sheer willpower and obstinacy ever since. In case you are wondering, <clears throat> this was all conducted to attract publicity to a major family entertainment provider, an amusement park, which is a facility for removing all the money in a grown-up's wallet and over the course of a day depriving them of the will to live. The ones that absolutely love this stuff are those that have to fill pages in the press, a rapidly dying industry which disseminates tales of other people's misfortunes. Normally they do this by going out and finding stories, but would much prefer if the story found them by pinging into their email account from a PR company, which is Professional Truth Varnishers. The ones that absolutely love this stuff are journalists, sharp and embowed moral vacuums who would monster their own grandmother in print if they thought they were going to get a byline with their picture beside it. And so it goes on. It really is a very good book. Let me see if I can find it now. Amazon... Uh, Nick Abbott. Let's see if I can find it on Amazon now for you, just in case there's anyone that might might want to buy it. Is that it there? And it's very, very humorous, very humorous. Uh, I think that's it there, is it? Yeah, that's it. It's called Listen to Me, I Know Everything by Nick Abbott. And it's N-I-C-K. A double B O T. As I say, you don't need a Kindle. All you need is an iPhone. I don't know if it works on um, an Android phone as well, but certainly Amazon will give you a free Kindle app. You buy the book, which is one pound ninety nine. That's all it is, and it's a really good, amusing read. And I must, I must admit, I sat there last night. I've been sitting at workplaces reading these books. <laughs> bit naughty really. Uh, good morning Terry. Morning Terry who's here a bit late but never mind never mind Terry we're always grateful that you would turn up at some point in your sad lonely pathetic life. Okay always 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 very happy that you're actually here. So give that book a go and um, I read it last night I read quite a lot of the book last night I was um, 
working I was working at this place in Essex and actually I, I'm I'm gonna chuck that one in I well I have already um, it just doesn't work there for me I, I don't I don't feel it works don't get me wrong you know people were dancing and that one of the biggest thing problems with that particular place is that there were two rooms there's a small room and a much larger room the trouble is the small room is too small and the big room is too big do you, do you sort of see what I mean and once that big room is opened they can, they can't fill it and you can be kind of playing a tune and then someone decides to go for a cigarette and the entire place empties and it's a real nightmare in there other things are it's a real long journey not so bad going there but coming home at the end is a bit of a pain you know traveling home three o'clock in the morning and you're very tired and didn't really want to be there do you know what I mean kind of got to the point where I, I thought I don't really want to be here today so I've I've left that one it's a bit odd in there um, most of the customers are fine they seem to have a knack in there though of coming up and asking for songs that I'd never heard of. Now, this generally happens a couple of times a night. That's what I do. One of the jobs I do is DJing. I do karaoke and quiz nights as well. I much, much prefer now to do karaoke nights and quiz nights to DJing. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not fed up with DJing at all, but there are certain situations where you think, oh, you know, I can't be bothered to do this anymore, or, you know, th th this isn't happening for me. Now, it's extremely rare, very, very rare, for me to leave a job. I've got to be really, really fed up, okay? Really fed up um, at a place, or I just don't think it's working and in this case I don't I didn't I don't think it's working for me there and you have to feel that it works DJing is not a job where you just turn up do the job and go home you've got to be into what you're doing otherwise it's never going to work and it doesn't seem to be a team effort in there either I get there generally before everyone else I'm, I'm, I'm always like that always I'm early I get there I set up I wait the chap who um, books us comes in says hello turns the power on don't see him again and there's just no communication with bar staff there and DJing there's one bloke I think he's in charge of the bar don't know what his name is he is as miserable as sin and you kind of wonder how these people hold on to jobs he never says a word to me I've been there almost a year once a month and this bloke has never said and I've, I've, I've tried to talk you know how you try and open a conversation and nothing comes back it's like talking to a blip ball miserable as sin and one of the bar staff, I think the bar staff has gone there. Again, it was several occasions I tried to talk to him. Nothing. Just turned away and walked off. How blooming rude can you be? So that's one thing. The other thing was the constant asking for songs that I'd never heard of. I don't know where they're getting these requests from. Generally you'll get a hits album, perhaps. And I'm... I'm, main, I'm a mainstream DJ, right? I will play what is or has been in the charts. 
not track four on the album that was never released on the single that only a few people know. I try and be as mainstream as I can and try and ma please the majority of the people that are there. But it's really, really, it's really difficult in there. Must be one of the hardest places I've ever worked. I don't know why. Don't know why. So there's that, that. Money is good. Money is fine. It's very good. And But then there's the journey home. You know, three o'clock I finish. Okay, I'm in the car. Two minutes past three. I don't muck about. But no one says hello to you or goodbye in there. None of the staff. So, the last three times I felt, oh, I don't know about this one. And my best mate Ronnie said, well, just leave him. Leave. So I have. <laughs> I sent a little text today. Uh, grateful for the work, as always, for over the year. But if you don't feel it, it, it feels right. You have to go. You have to go. That's just, it's only... Let me think now. It's only the second place, really. There was another place, also, strangely enough, in Essex. In, um... Oh, what's it now? What's, what's the main part of Essex? Anyone? Colchester. There was one in Colchester I did, I think, probably about two years ago. That was Saturday nights. And again, it just did not feel right. Mind you, the manager there, well, he was just a complete idiot. An absolute idiot. You, know, you, you get you get the, the customers asking you for one sort of stuff, but he, he was stuck in his youth in the 80s. Now, I love the 80s music, but these youngsters don't want it. And I would be playing what they wanted, and they'd come over and moan, oh, I thought, I'd oh, quit. Quit. <laughs> They're always quite shocked when you quit. <laughs> they don't know what to do then. <laughs> the only other time I've left once because... Um, Left one place because they wouldn't give us a rise after like five years, so I left that one. And I left one place um, because it just the the assistant manager was just a dick, uh, 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 an idiot. <laughs> Jimmy, you know what I was going to say? <laughs> he was just a complete and utter idiot. Just no backing at all. No backing at all. I'll give an example. On the Tuesday night, we I would be doing a karaoke at this particular place. And we would bring tables down from the garden to the bar. And on many occasions, this just wasn't done. So I'd ring up the manager and tell him and nothing would happen. So then I'd go upstairs and bring the tables down on my own for the customers, because I want them to be happy. And there was one particular night, not a single time. Where, where's all the tables? Oh, it was raining. But, yeah, and? That's your job. Bring the blooming tables down. And I got, I got so fed up there, then you have to go and that's it. If you can't sort it out, just leave. End of. And over the years, and I've said this before, I've been very, very lucky with work. Jobs are finished, and other ones come along. So that's it. I'm very, very lucky. I don't have a replacement Friday for that one Friday a month, but I'm pretty sure I can just pick up the phone and um, and, and get one. Uh, perhaps if I want to, you know, somewhere where I'd be happier working. If you're not happier, if you're not happy working as a DJ, karaoke, or quiz, or any any entertainment things like that, I think you have to go, and you you, you can't. You, you, you just can't do it, you know. Uh, good afternoon uh, to, once again, to nephew Jimmy, who says, I have some very good news. He's got two tickets to a Chelsea game in March. Oh, my God. You're not going to a football match, Jim, surely. Is that wise? It's a dangerous place, Jimmy. Dangerous. So does that mean you're staying here? Do you want your room? I bet I won't even see you. You'll just go straight to the match, come back here while I'm at work, go to sleep and leave before in the morning. Do you think this is some sort of hotel, nephew? Am I running a hotel here? Well, it'll have to be fees. They'll have to be, by way, what do you want for breakfast? Send it over and I'll arrange that for you as well. Does that mean you'll be coming to church with me Sunday morning, Jim? <laughs> 
Oh, look who's appeared. It's crawled out from under a stone. It's Daniel. Good morning, Daniel, in Camberley. Are you sure it's not that you're on rubbish D-Day? Oh, probably it is, Daniel. Maybe it is. I'm sure you'd find something to complain about anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want for breakfast on that day? Do you want me to get some stuff in? I don't have to buy dead animals, do I, Jim? In packets, disguised as bacon. <laughs> £110 for two tickets? To see a football match? Are you gone mad? You can have a pair of trainers for that. I can have four pairs of trainers for that. <laughs> Oh dear, anyone else going to the Chelsea matches with us today? Or anyone go to any football matches? Where is the excitement in going to a football match? Please someone let me know. Jim, I don't suppose you'd be interested in coming to the Eurovision Song Contest with me one year, would you? Would that, <laughs> would that be of interest to you? And talking of family things... Oh, hang on a minute. Was um, Daniel says, can you do up the jumper please? Or oh, is it undone? Sorry. Well, it's only a little bit of flesh there. It's not too bad, is it? Come on. I didn't know whether I should have the collar up or down today. Toast and cornflakes. Oh, of course. Well, I'll, I'll do your toast and uh, cornflakes, Jim. But you will have to bring the little thing for me to stamp. A little bit of paper. Jimmy and I, this time last year, funnily, I was talking to um, Ryan earlier in the Netherlands about Disney. Well worked, uh, Ryan. Uh, Jim and I were in Disney this time last year. I can't remember. So it's Saturday. I think on the Saturday we went shopping, didn't we? Or did we go to Fantasyland or whatever it's called? I can't remember now. One, one of the two. <laughs> Can I do up the jumper? Nothing wrong with this jumper. Oh, good morning to Rory. Who says, um, good, to, good show. See you at karaoke. 7th of February, is it? Is that when you're coming? 7th of Feb? What one's that? Hang on, I'll tell you. Right, one minute. Seventh of Feb is a Saturday. Oh no, um that one's been ca we've cancelled the Saturday karaoke's at the Golden Lion because they don't work very well. Okay, so we're only doing Fridays now. The next the next Friday karaoke at the Golden Lion is this month on the 30th. And that'd be nine o'clock. Now the Fridays have worked quite well there. Okay, R Rory, so remember that, all right? Friday the 30th of January is the next karaoke at the Golden Lion in Sydney. All are welcome, free entry. Okay, sorry to disappoint you there. You probably arranged that. Rory says, I'm not going to a football match. No, I can't think of anything more boring. My, uh, my nephew's a big, big Chelsea fan. He's got the posters. And he went down there once and had his picture taken with all the cups. And uh, uh, general paraphernalia like that. Now, um, <coughs> where's my little thing? I was going to tell you something. More family news, boys and girls. I'm very happy to announce that my nephew's wife they're going to have another baby and they have chosen the name. They know it's a little girl and it's got my mum's name in the middle. And I, I have to tell you, I've been waiting ever since you all got married for someone to insert my mum's name into one of the new children's names. And it's happened at last, I'm very pleased to say. Uh, they're having a little girl and it's going to be called Bonnie Bridget. Bridget was my mum's name. So that I was quite over the moon about that. Bonnie Bridget. Isn't that a nice name? Do you like that? It's nice when you've got your um, parents, they're no longer with me, when you've got parents, your parents' name in their grandchildren somewhere. I do think that's quite nice. I'm still waiting for someone to use my name somewhere. Oh, it's Jimmy, isn't it? You have, haven't you, Jim? Jimmy Christopher Butler, that's right. Jimmy's got my name. Maybe, Jimmy, when you have children, uh, it will be Christopher something. Would that be acceptable? For another trip to Florida, perhaps? <laughs> oh, dear. That might be an idea. Uh, 
What else am I going to tell you about? Oh yes. Oh yes. Mobile phones. Now, this week we were talking about mobile phones and um, on the short videos, one of the short videos, I was telling you an article in the Daily Mail that I saw that warns you to turn off your answer phone when you go abroad. Because a lot of the companies, and I got caught out like uh, for this, when you're abroad, if someone calls your answer phone, you can be charged for that. Even though you never answered the call. So you go abroad, you must turn off those answer phones. Now, I don't think you can actually do that yourself on a lot of the networks. You have to ring them and say, can you please turn off my answer phone, I'm going abroad. Okay, make sure you do that. Even if you buy one of the add-on packages, you know, like you might pay £10 for 60 minutes of calls while you're outside Europe, something like that. Even if you buy that, the answer phone is not included within that little package. And it cost me 200 quid when I come back from Israel, which was a bit of a shock. Because they don't tell you. I'm sh yes, I know. I'm sure it's written in the small print somewhere, but who reads that? They don't tell you that those answer phone messages are not included. And just by you ringing me, I mean, if, if, you, know, if you didn't like someone, and you knew they'd taken their phone abroad to uh, a country outside Europe. You could just keep ringing it and leaving messages, couldn't you? Costing them a small fortune. And uh, Terry certainly wrote in and he said, your, your people, EE, -E, I'm with EE, -E, they're, they're the worst at doing that. Now, interestingly enough, apart from that incident, I've not really ever had a problem with EE. A phone goes wrong, they send a new one, although not, not at the moment because I bought my phone out right now. Um, generally, I don't have a problem with them. Now, he swears by the company 3. 3 is a telephone network here and indeed in many other countries. Interestingly, Terry, I would never ever buy another 3 phone. The trouble I had with those about 15 years ago was unbelievable. It's all very well while the phone is working. As soon as it goes wrong, you try and get that replaced. I had terrible, terrible trouble with the customer services at 3. Really bad. So I would never ever buy another 3 phone. Which brings us on to this little story. In the Daily Mail, possibly yesterday this one. How filthy is your phone? Pictures reveal the stomach-churning, invisible life lurking. I love that. I like that word, lurking. Do you go lurking, Terry? Do you go lurking? Lurking on the average handset. Students imprinted phones in Petri dishes. I like, I like that word, don't you? Petri. Petri dishes. It's got a nice ring to it, isn't it? Petri. There are certain words that I like. Petri dish, lurking. I like the word membrane. What words do you like? Is there any words that you that you really like? Come and type them over and let's have a look at them. Anyway, it says if you're really without your smartphone, and this was I said was in the Daily Mail, then the chances are it's teeming with bacteria. Bacteria. It's always a scary word. Bacteria as seen in this collection of alarming photos. In many cases, this bacteria is relatively harmless and comes from touching unclean surfaces or not washing your hands properly. Wash your hands, you dirty people. Who's not washing their hands? Oh, Jim, Jimmy's little boy will be called Jimmy Junior. Well, that's quite, that's quite good, Jimmy Junior. <laughs> Jimmy Junior. Terry says he's not a lurk. Daniel says the clock stops. No, it hasn't. Why did you say the clock stopped? That's still going around. Are you blind? Do try and keep up with us, Daniel. What planet are you on today? Terry says he's not a lurk. <laughs> he's not a lurker. 
Oh dear, and there's various pictures of the stuff that's growing on someone's mobile phone. Oh, it's disgusting. They, they, they put this thing in the Petri dish. You know, that's that jelly type stuff, isn't it? After three days, they studied the bacteria that had grown in the dishes and were both shocked by what was discovered. On a number of occasions, the disease-carrying bacteria Staphylococcus aureus was discovered. It is... I can't read the news, can I? It's thought that 20% of people are long-term carriers of the bug, which often lurks. It's lurking. Lurking. <laughs> Inside the nasal passages. Maybe that's why my blooming nose is so itchy all the time. It itches like mad, my nose. On a number of occasions, the disease-carrying bacteria Staphylococcus aureus was discovered. I've read that bit of life. <laughs> <laughs> Losing the plot here. And the will to live, possibly. Um, many healthy people carry these bacteria on their skin, in their noses, with get, get, without getting sick. But when the skin is punctured or broken, the bacteria can enter the wound and cause infection. So, you know, that's all on your mobile phone. I don't know what the answer to that is. I suppose you can spray it occasionally with a bit of disinfectant. Or, or, or preferably put... Uh, what I would do is... Um, spray the in disinfectant onto the cloth and then wipe it over your mobile phone a few times a day. You can get those hand things as well, can't you? You know, those already, um, what do you call it? Already, um, cloths, antiseptic cloths on that from, from the supermarket now, can't you? You don't have to stand there with a dry one and spray it and hope for the best. It's already done, isn't it? I actually carry some from my karaoke microphones. Oh my god, I don't know what sort of infections are stuck in the mesh. I've got my, have I got one here? Let me have a look. I haven't got one here. But um, microphones for the karaoke, they've got like a mesh on the top. And all these dirty people who never brush their teeth use them, dear. How disgusting. Getting all germs in my microphone. So now and again, I'll give them a little bit of a wipe. I do remember once using someone else's microphone in a DJ box. And I work quite close to the mic, so it's like right up, not, not, in, not here in my little radio uh, uh, thing, but doing karaoke in a live situation, that mic needs to be really close to your mic. And I kept touching the bottom of my chin with it. Well, within a couple of minutes, my chin had come up red raw. So I some, some, must have had some awful infection on the bottom of that microphone. So do remember that, gang. If you're going to a karaoke night or something like that, clean that microphone first. Dirty people. Dirty, dirty people who don't clean themselves. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, we're nearly done, boys and girls. Um, let's just do one couple of more messages. Thank you for your favourite word, Daniel. I thought it might be something like that. I'm not going to read it out, no. It says, please read out my favourite word. It's not rude. It's in the human body. No, not going to read it out, no. Always take wipes when going out. <laughs> oh, Terry, if you could only see what things Daniel writes to me. In fact, one minute. I'll show them to you, Terry. One minute. Look what he writes. Oh, my God, it's snow. Oh, no. It's snowing where Terry is. I hate the snow. We don't like snow. One minute. Is that working? Let me just... Uh, Copy selection. There it is. There it is. Hey, are Terry. That's the sort of message. I get that sort of message from Daniel all the time. He only lives down the road in Camberley. They wanted to move to uh, Bracknell, but we wouldn't have him here. <laughs> we, <laughs> we don't have people that buy all their stuff in Sports Direct in Bracknell. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Yes, Terry says it's snowing now. I hate the snow. I really, really hate the snow, I'm afraid. Don't like snow at all. I think, and um, Rory says my favourite word is continuity, as in ongoing contact, or continuity announcer. That's one thing I wanted to do that as a job. I wanted to be a continuity announcer. Do you know what that means? 
as the bloke who comes up in between the programmes. Coming up next on BBC One, as I wanted to do that, and I never did anything about it. I have a friend who's continuity announcer at E4. You probably heard him if you watch E4. He's the guy with the Irish accent. His name's Danny Cowan. And um, he did give me the heads up once that they were looking for new announcers on, on E4. But I wanted to be the BBC One announcer. With the globe going round. But the globe has gone now. Has been gone for many years. Rather disappointingly. But I do quite like the new BBC One idents. Anyone like those? I think they're quite nice. Anyway, time for me to go, boys and girls. That's it today. Thank you very much for joining. I had a little happy throng of people every Saturday uh, afternoon right here on unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. There is an email address. If you fancy sending in an email during the week, and I'll read it out, probably on one of the short shows uh, during the week. We do short videos as well. Uh, most days, Tuesday through to Friday during the week. You can find those by going to United Kingdom Talk. .co.uk and click the large union flag at the top and you'll find them all there, all right? You have a lovely Saturday. Um, if you're around in Dulwich tomorrow, in East Dulwich in London, I do do karaoke at the Cherry Tree. That's in uh, on Grove Vale, East Dulwich, very, very close to the train station now, right? Karaoke every Sunday night at the Cherry Tree in East Dulwich. Tonight, Saturday night, I should be working in Coventry at uh, Rainbows. Perhaps I'll see one or two of you there. Have a lovely Saturday. See you soon. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye-bye.